Rainwater harvesting is a method of capture of rainwater from man-made surfaces like rooftops and storing this water for uses such as drinking, cleaning, irrigation and industrial purposes. There has been a long history of rainwater harvesting in the Caribbean, especially for domestic use. But in most countries, this practice has dwindled in favour of public water supplies derived from surface and groundwater sources. In recent times, there has been renewed interest in rainwater harvesting in the region as a means of augmenting public water supplies and as an emergency water supply. Hi, I'm Natalie. I manage the Global Water Partnership Caribbean Water Climate and Development Program and we are participating and organizing a co-organizer for this workshop. Several regional agencies recently partnered to host a rainwater harvesting knowledge network forum in St. Lucia as part of a Caribbean-wide effort to re-establish a rainwater harvesting culture in the Caribbean. And we're here today partnering with a number of different organizations for a rainwater harvesting forum. It's not the first time we've collaborated. So for example, Global Water Partnership Caribbean has been working with CARFA on a number of rainwater initiatives. For example, the development of a traveling model. So literally we have a little model that we can take from country to country, from place to place, which shows some of the basics of rainwater harvesting and some of the ways to safely harvest rainwater. And we've also worked with CARFA to do a rainwater harvesting toolbox, an online toolbox which has full of resources including publications, videos, media messages, all of that, trying to educate people about rainwater harvesting. My name is Christopher Cox. I am the head of department at the Environmental Health and Sustainable Department of the Caribbean Public Health Agency. My name is Horst Vogel. I'm in charge of a program uh, sponsored by the German government on adaptation to climate change in smallholder agriculture and forestry. We are partnering with CARICOM in Guyana, the CARICOM Secretariat in Guyana. And we are very much interested in supporting livelihoods in the rural areas. And we see rainwater harvesting as one means to safeguard livelihoods and to even improve them. Hi, I'm Chris Corbin. I'm program officer with the United Nations Environment Program, Caribbean Environment Program, which is based in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, UNEPSEP has been involved in several projects involving integrated water resources management and we saw this particular forum as an ideal opportunity to bring together some of the experiences that we've had in executing a number of projects, uh, most of them funded by the Global Environmental Facility. In fact, one such project is really what contributed directly to this, to this forum which is bringing together the lessons from not just projects within the Caribbean, but from outside the region as well. We have to be able to explain what rainwater harvesting really means, rather than just saying you put an old steel drum at the back of your house with some water running off the roof. That's typically what the notion of rainwater harvesting has been. We're trying to get um, persons like contractors, builders, architects, when they're designing homes or designing buildings, they build all of these things into the new paradigm of green buildings, water conservation, all those good things. Yeah, as a complementary measure to rainwater harvesting, German Development Corporation is now also embarking on water loss reduction. We are just starting a large regional program through Vasco here in St. Lucia, but that will also be extended to water utilities right across the Caribbean. This can be not just a sharing of lessons and experiences, it can also be coming to some, some significant uh, decisions as to how we can move rainwater harvesting forward. What do we need to do to change national and regional policy? What do we need to do to change national and regional legislation? And more importantly, to identify what priorities do countries now need to put on the table so that we can have a more secure and safe water supply. We have to make sure that whatever we're doing to harvest rainwater, we do it safely and we make sure that we don't predispose the public at a higher risk. A lot of what we need to promote as well with respect to rainwater harvesting and good practices is health and sanitation. So the health side of things is to make sure we don't in a, in a, inadvertently worsen the situation. So I think as we move forward, it's really about how do we collectively with our different focus areas look at water as a resource, uh, look at the linkages with sanitation, and look at rainwater harvesting as an economic and a livelihood opportunity.
So Global Water Partnership Caribbean has over 80 partners, many of whom are here today talking about their experiences on rainwater harvesting. So we're gathering all of that information and also adding our experiences from our GWP counterparts in the Mediterranean and in the Central American countries. So we're bringing all of that together and then we plan on using our network as well for sharing and disseminating that information. So it's about gathering and sharing this information as well. Over 50 persons from the Caribbean, Mediterranean, Central and South America came together for this meeting to share information and experiences on rainwater harvesting. Discussions focused on suitable technologies, policies and fiscal incentives. Rainwater harvesting tools and resources were highlighted including online resources, studies and models. So today is the second day of our Rainwater Harvesting Forum here in the Caribbean and we're particularly honored today because we have with us at this meeting a number of participants from around the Global Water Partnership Network. So we have here, for example, representatives from Central America and, and the Mediterranean who will introduce themselves and talk a little bit about their experiences. We also have here with us a member of our steering committee, the Global Water Partnership Caribbean Steering Committee. This is Dr. Frederica Deer and I'll ask you to say a few words. Basically, I'm glad to be here because hearing about rainwater harvesting in other parts of the world is key, I think, to solve some of the problems we have in the Caribbean. And also, it allows us to be very creative with how we go about doing things. Um, hearing about what is happening with others mean that we won't be locked in our boxes because we do things one way and we not, you know, um, for example, hearing about um, tackling it at a policy level, I think it was important. Hello, my name is Marta Estrada. I come from Guatemala. Uh, I'm representing GWP Central America. Uh, I belong to an organization called Fundación Solar, which is a partner of GWP. And uh, I find it really enriching um, for, for our knowledge about water handling uh, water conservation, water equity, uh, and water security. And I'm really happy to be here in San Lucia. It's the first time I've been here. Hello, I'm Constantina Toli from uh, the Secretariat of the Global Water Partners in Mediterranean. And I'm very honored to be here and to be participating in this Knowledge ex Exchange Forum on rainwater harvesting, especially since we come, we have uh, a similar background with the islands, the rainwater harvesting in the islands, and it has been a great pleasure to, to see that uh, rainwater harvesting can actually uh, add to the water security and can play a very important role. And we are currently exploring, and we hope you know that we can take this further to explore the opportunities of working cross-regionally with the Caribbean. Hello, my name is Rona Diaz. I work in a technological university of Panama that is part of the global water partnership of Central America. And I think uh, in the technical point of view, all the universities and technical groups that are here really uh, can make something very, very important for the, for the field if we research together. So for me, this is a good opportunity to make that network. Participants also visited a range of rainwater harvesting installations in St. Lucia. These included small household setups, but also large commercial systems. For example, a hotel where rainwater is collected and used for the hotel's swimming pools and water park. Participants learned about different options for rainwater harvesting systems, including the design and installation of guttering, pipes, tanks, and mechanisms to protect stored water quality, such as first flush filters. Discussions also focused on vector control, 
including the proper use of mesh and screens to reduce mosquito breeding in stored water supplies. I, I believe that <clears throat> a lot more effort needs to go into um, convincing the policy makers, whether at the political level or at the level of the water utilities, the professional engineers and so forth, of the importance of rainwater harvesting for our communities. And I think um, on, the, on the GWPC agenda, we need to find a strategy for getting the issue of rainwater harvest, harvesting as a, as a policy issue. We need to bring that to the ministers of the OECS and at the level of CARICOM. Rainwater harvesting has expanded into rainwater harvesting for agriculture, for commercial use. So whilst we at the outset were looking at rainwater harvesting for small communities and all of that, it has now expanded and, and this workshop was truly an eye-opener. I foresee in the future that there will be a, a major push to have, I would say maybe 20 to 25% of all households in the Caribbean having some kind of rainwater harvesting system. Music